There you go. So the claim that I'm going to be refuting is that denying same-sex couples' right to marriage is a violation of our nation's commitment to equality. And my opponent's uh, claims were that denying same-sex couples the right of marriage is a violation of the Declaration of Independence, and denying same-sex couples the right of marriage is unconstitutional by violating the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. Now, in response to the first claim, which was uh, denying same-sex couples right of marriage is a violation of the Declaration of Independence, um, the first claim was flawed due to the fact that the advocate did not e effectively state the relationship between the Declaration of Independence and the right to and the right to same-sex marriage. And um, the advocate makes a hasty generalization by claiming that denying same-sex couples the right of marriage is denying that denying same-sex couples the right of marriage is a violation of the Declaration of Independence. Due to the statement that was written on the document, all men are created equal. All men are created equal. And uh, the advocate stated on the speech that in the first paragraph of the Declaration of Independence drafted by Thomas Jefferson in 1776, it states that all men are created equal. And then the advocate continues by stating that, what did Jefferson mean by this line? And uh, according to Matt Brennage, an arts graduate from Maryland, Jefferson's restricted definition was, people are of equal moral worth, and as such deserve equal treatment under the law. Uh, the claim was flawed due to the fact that uh, just because same-sex couples do not have the right to marry doesn't mean it violates the Declaration of Independence. For although the Declaration of Independence um, does state that all men are created equal, the reason or purpose of the Declaration of Independence was written for the colonies to formally declare or announce their independence from Great Britain, not to establish a rule of um, a rule or law that people are equal. And to support this, um, David there's a David Armitage who's a an expert on the Declaration of Independence and. Uh, he earned his PhD in the University of Cambridge, and he was a professor of history at Columbia University. He wrote a book called The Declaration of Independence, uh, A Global History, and it ex examines the original intention of the, de of the document, the Declaration of Independence, and uh, the intention was to declare the legal and political sovereignty of the colonies from the British rule, as opposed to outlining personal liberties as it is contemporarily interpreted. And the reason why, in this case, I focus on the claim and not on the grounds supported um, by a former claim, is that the grounds that the advocate provides are linked to the claim, so naturally if the claim is not acceptable, despite the grounds providing good backup for the claim, the, gra the grounds have no relevance due to the claim being unacceptable. And the advocate distorts the facts and provides an irrelevant thesis. And in regards to the second, the second claim, uh, which is uh, denying same-sex couples right of marriage is unconstitutional um, by violating the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment, and the second claim is flawed, and it's due to the fact that the advocate makes a hasty generalization by stating that uh, denying same-sex couples the right to marry violates the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment of the Constitution. Of the Constitution, the advocate also only provides info information on the separate but equal doctrine, on the separate but equal doctrine, and created a, fal a false analogy between the separate but equal doctrine that segregated African Americans and the civil union uh, marriage, um, and. Um, to prove this, um, an article on lawanddemocracy.org is saying that questions of equal protection usually arise when a state denies a particular class of people that the right to do something that allows other individuals to do. When courts are deciding whether or not a state has violated the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment, they apply a particular test to the case depending on what classification the state has made. In most, instance, in most instances, the court permits laws that do not treat people equally if they have a rational basis and a legitimate purpose. The claims lack acceptability for, for um, denying same-sex couples right to marry. For, um, it does not violate the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment for the state to apply a test to see if denying a particular class of people the right to do something is violating the Equal Protection Clause. And the states that deny the right to marriage for same-sex couples have made this process, so it doesn't necessarily violate the Equal Protection uh, Clause of the 14th Amendment. And um, another, um, uh, to, uh, to support my uh, claim, is that classifications based on race trigger heightened scrutiny under the Equal Protection Clause, but the Supreme Court has never ruled on the issue of classifications based on sexuality. Because sexuality is not, classi is not a classification for which the Supreme Court has demanded such heightened scrutiny, um, the decision to let opposite sex couples marry and to deny the same opportunity to same couples falls under the traditional powers of government to enact economic and social regulation and the so-called police powers. And these powers go beyond economic and social regulation. And um, the advocate, the advocate's um, evidence supporting the claim that um,
denying same-sex couples the right of marriage is unconstitutional by violating the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. And um, she stated that we have all heard the statement separate but equal, presented by some Supreme Court cases such as Brown versus Board of Education and Plessy versus Ferguson. And the advocates say that the separate but equal rule was said to be a violation of the Constitution's Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. And the clause states that all persons born or naturalized in the United States and, su and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without the due process of the law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdictions the equal protection of laws. Then according to the Legal Information Institute of Cornell University, this means that the laws of the state must treat an individual in the same manner as others in similar conditions and circumstances. Uh, the advocate also claimed that the separate but equal rule in the past was deemed unconstitutional, but now our nation is bringing it back, that rule with gay marriage. And the supporting point that the advocate provided is flawed due to the fact that the advocate made a false analogy between the separate but equal doctrine of 1896 that segregated African Americans and uh, comparing that to the civil union and marriage. Thank you. Now I'll take it. Oh, uh, just, oh, there it is. I'm sorry, I was looking down. Which is what you were doing quite a bit of the time, so that'll be one of those comments, too. <laughs> uh, I thought that you did a good job labeling the claims that you're responding to. There's a lot of background analysis. I think you spend a huge amount of time on the Declaration of Independence argument, kind of repeating well, what the issues are when it all comes down to a counterclaim that you're presenting, that is, that the Declaration is really not supposed to be an enumeration of uh, the rights and liberties that people have. And that comes you know, well into your argument that's the main issue there so I think you probably could have edited that down a little bit and instead of just recapping everything and kind of going through that whole process make a, a much clearer declarative sentence there to make your argument easier to follow on the second point I did think that uh, you your analysis was a little bit more relevant and you had some multiple arguments that you're making that are based on fallacies you list three fallacies that you're going to be talking about and you do a pretty good job explaining each of those uh, you've got some good counter evidence on the issue of the hasty generalization. I thought that was okay. Uh, the counterclaim that says the states have made a decision uh, following the criteria that is uh, constitutionally acceptable, I think that needs a little bit more explanation. In other words, have the states enact, basically you're saying the states have acted in a way that is legal under the Constitution of the United States by not allowing gay marriage or um, <laughs> not changing to allow gay marriage uh, and I think you have to have a clear explanation about how those states made those procedures. For instance, if they did it in legal ways by rejecting it in their uh, state assemblies or voting on it by uh, the citizens or having a, a declaration in their own constitutions, uh, that's exactly you know the process by which the states enumerate what their uh, rights and abilities are. On the uh, argument about the 14th Amendment, you do make this argument that it's a false analogy to separate but equal, but I didn't understand why you said it. I mean, I understand that you're claiming it's a false analogy, but I didn't think that you did a very good job explaining what was false about it. In other words, how are these things substantially different and why shouldn't they be treated the same way? Uh, so I thought that you labeled the arguments well. I thought that you uh, had good uh, <coughs> reasoning challenges and evidence on most of those points. A couple of them needed a little bit more explanation, and I think you need some editing on that first point. All right. Thank you.